This is my bathroom here in Ubud, and wouldn't it be amazing to have an outside shower, a shower that you could just use outside every single day of the year and never get cold? I'm really enjoying it. I'll just take you through a walk through my hotel room. I'll show you one thing I do. By the way, hi, it's Sue here, and um, I'm a coach and a writer if we haven't met before. You can find out more about me over at thechangeguru.net, but I'm in Ubud, Bali. I hope this is showing. Maybe I should just flip it really quick. Let's flip yeah, um, I'm in Ubud, Bali for a retreat with my longtime yoga teacher to celebrate 18 years of practicing, practicing Ashtanga yoga. So as often as I can, I'm going to be doing some diaries um, from Bali to just share what I'm learning um, as I'm on this retreat. But I want to show you one thing very quickly, a practice that I do whenever I'm in a hotel. I'm really big on practice. I love practice. I practice my yoga, I do silent sitting, I do journaling, I study French every day. I just have these like rituals that I do every single day that keep me feeling very grounded. The very least, that's what they do. But one thing I do whenever I travel is I will put my clothes away. If I'm staying somewhere longer than um, a couple days, I will unpack and put my clothes away. So let me just show you really quick. Oops. It's getting dark in here. But so I've hung up my clothes. <laughs> I don't have a lot, and you can't really see. It's very difficult. That's one thing about this hotel. It's a little bit challenging. And, oh, you can barely see anything. But trust me, there's my underwears there, and then some of my yoga clothes there, my suitcases down there. So I always unpack, and it just makes me feel, makes me feel so much more organized to, to do that. And I'll show you outside really quick. And this is my little my little balcony. It makes you feel so organized to do that and especially when you're traveling it's really easy to feel um, a bit discombobulated. I've been saying that a few times haven't I but it makes you're a little bit scattered so knowing where everything is just makes things so much easier especially when you're in a situation like me right now where I'm traveling alone and um, you know the money's different and all that stuff. Just being as organized and as sparse as possible is so helpful. But what I wanted to do in these in these video diaries um, that I'm doing from Abud while I'm in retreat is share with you kind of the retreat experience and share with you the lessons that I learn. I'm using this time for myself to ask big questions about you know who I am and why I'm here. I love talking about life purpose and, and sharing what I learned, but I'm doing that purely for myself right now, just asking those questions. I'm um, here because I often don't go to do a class with my teacher, Eileen Hall. I usually practice by myself, so this is my time to get full immersion into kind of community and class situation and spend time um, with Eileen and, and learning. and. It's not the kind of retreat where you're coming and you're laying at the pool. Well, you can't lay at the pool, but it's not like drinking cocktails and um, partying every single night. I'm using it for myself as a time to retreat, to go within. So I'm, you know, also, you know, I don't have to do any cleaning. It's not like a normal household kind of situation where I'm at home and I have to clean. I'm not working except for doing some, some videos and talking and stuff. Hey, mate. Cool. Thanks, Ash. I will. And it's one of those times where um, you just don't have normal responsibilities. And what that does is it creates space. It creates an opportunity to have these moments where you can think about, you know, what am I doing with my life? Am I? What are things that are important to me? What are areas of my life that I could improve and work on? And um, just to withdraw from those things. So a retreat to me is not going and just spending all day hopping from um, treatment to treatment to treatment to treatment and um, activity to activity to activity. It's having these times of being away. And, and one thing that I actually am trying to do today, and it's a little bit difficult because I know a lot of the people, a lot of the people that are here, I've known for years. I've been practicing um, with this teacher Eileen Hall is an amazing woman for 18 years and so have many of the people that are here right now so we're kind of like a like a long lost family so it's really easy to spend time together but I'm purposely 
retreating from people a little bit and spending time with myself. And um, today was a day where actually I just really want to spend the next three or four hours just by myself um, writing. I've got a book to read, just being still. I've been because I'm not at home, I'm trying to do some silent sitting three times a day in addition to the classes that I'm going into. Um, yeah, so that's, that's to me is what a retreat is. You could do a retreat situation at home, you know. You don't have to come to a bud. For example, you could take a break to shut off the television for a few days. Or you could say, I'm not going to go to Facebook for a few days. Or I'm, um, I'm going to just sit quietly... Um, every morning. Or, you know what, I'm not going to answer my phone for, for three days. I'm just going to pretend like I have no Wi-Fi and I have um, no, there's no service. And I'm just going to see what that feels like, to have that silence and, and that space. Um, at first it feels very, very un, uh, um, unsettling. And in my last diary, which was the first one that I did, I felt very... Whoa. I have an interesting story to tell you about um, a bud, which maybe contributed to the reason why I was feeling very off kilter that first day. If you don't know Bali, Bali is an island in Indonesia, and you might remember the movie Eat, Pray, Love, and the area where they filmed the Bali portion of Eat, Pray, Love with Julia Roberts and the Elizabeth Gilbert book is in this place called Ubud, and it's a gorgeous place. It's lush, it's got rice patties, it's got all these gorgeous temples and beautiful offerings all over the place. It really is, you know, just aesthetically mm, gorgeous. And in the movie Eat, Pray, Love, um, the character comes here and she gets like a spiritual awakening. She's just so inspired by everything. She goes to a healer and she does her meditation practice. And what happened is that movie, that book, created this influx of tourists that come here on yoga retreats, just like me. They come here to do what I'm doing, right? I'm, I'm contributing to the situation to, um, to work on their selves and to feel healthier and to um, just go, go within, to retreat. And there's so many yoga places here and so much beautiful vegetarian food and it's just a whole scene, but it's gotten so crowded and so touristy. And amongst all these influx of tourists that are here, you have people, the Balinese people, who are doing their ceremonies. And lots of, you know, you see all these beautiful Hindu temples and people doing their beautiful offerings. So you have the tourists that are discharging all of their stuff and healing and all these broken people coming here and putting all this psychic energy of crazy out there. And then the the people, the local people that are having to kind of clean up all this spiritual um, spiritual garbage with all, you know, trying to kind of put a balance in there. So there's a lot of energy here. There's a lot of, I, you can feel it. It's a very, it's a very full on energy combined with the, the, the beautiful lushness of everything, but the people energy is quite strong. And so when you go into town, it's very, very full on. So I thought that was really interesting about the idea that it's, um, there's a lot of psychic energy that's created by all these tourists that come here to get healed, to eat, pray, love, feeling it, and trying to feel it. And I think the goal in life is to, no matter where you're living, whether you're in New York City, or you're in Sydney, or you're in the, you know, a, the country, or you're in the mountains, is to create an environment so you don't necessarily need to come to Bali to get healed. Healing and the concept of being on a retreat, it actually is something that you can do every single day at home. You don't want to get to the point where you're so broken that you have to go somewhere else to, to feel better. And that's why, to me, the idea of practices are so important. They are the things that are like your mini retreat at home. It might not be in the most, you know, these lush, amazing surroundings, but they are things that you can do every day that will make you present, that will help you do inquiry, help you feel, um, help you get to know who you are and why you're here and what your point is on this planet without having to, you know, take off and, and spend time at a retreat. Not that it, a retreat is so important regardless of what you're doing, but you just don't want to get to the point where you must go on a retreat to get back to, to basics. It's just kind of a learning how the discipline 
and how to kind of maintain a lifestyle regardless of whether you're at. So that all you need to do is just sit down and be able to sit still for a few minutes or be able to journal for a few minutes or be able to roll out your mat and connect with your body for a few minutes. It's all you really need to do to retreat within to yourself every day. So one thing that I um, have been doing for myself every day is trying to, with, with respect to that idea of all this crazy energy that is in a bud created by all these tourists that come in, is to really be mindful of my own energy that I'm putting out there um, by just trying to not put out bad vibes, not be a complainer, be, try to be mindful of my words and my actions and because I have the space and the time I'm not home, I can kind of look at myself from the outside. I can look at myself from the outside. I can listen to myself from the inside and just make kind of a declaration of how I want to, what I want to focus on. Um, and um, I wrote some notes. I've been writing to myself. So I'm just kind of looking at my, my thought patterns. And one thing that I really noticed about myself here that I want to share with you, the learning that I'm learning, because maybe it's something that resonates with you, is that idea that you believe something that isn't necessarily true and the stories that you tell yourself about things that aren't necessarily true. For, so, for example, I said this in the first diary that I did, that I had heard that there were going to be like 60-something people at this retreat. And to me, that seemed like a very overwhelming number. I felt like, oh, it's just a lot of people to be around, and maybe it won't be very personal. And I was just kind of creating all this drama in my head. And so the next day, I went, and it was, you know, it was a lot of people. There's probably 40, 50 people here, but I know many of them, and um, we're all on the same page. And our teacher, Eileen, is really very good at making everybody feel welcome and get, making sure that everybody is has what they need to be comfortable and there's amazing attention and I just thought that I created a story in my head I, I created all this drama in my head about you know 65 people and this is going to be not what I really was hoping for and blah 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 creating all this anxiety and craziness in my head when actually it didn't happen and there were a couple instance instances that um, we're like, oh, another thing is the Ashtanga yoga is a quite a physical practice. And um, because I mostly practice by myself, maybe I'm a little bit lazy, and I knew that we'd be working pretty hard, so I couldn't, it was easy for me to create ideas in my head that um, the practice is going to be very hard and I'm going to be very sore and all of this stuff before I even got on the mat. And so I was looking at that, and I was able to look at that because I have the space to look at it. I don't have to do the dishes. I don't have to um, do any kind of work. I don't have to, um, you know, engage with my family. I'm here alone looking at myself so I can be a better person for all of that. And I was looking at that, and it's just like, okay, well, let's just detach rather than um, worrying about something. An idea comes in your head. So say a, a, a weird thing that kind of gets gets your back up, makes you feel a little bit emotional or angry or whatever comes into you. And you, if you can catch yourself and just say, is this real? No, I don't know. I don't know. I haven't experienced it. And then just say, okay, I'm just going to detach. I'm just going to see what happens rather than create all kinds of things myself. So I've just been catching myself when those odd times come along where I'm just thinking about how something's going to be. And I catch myself and I almost detach from the emotion of it. And that probably is one very cool thing. It actually came up in a, a yoga, our yoga class yesterday where um, the teacher explained that the great thing about yoga is it teaches you to observe emotions, to observe pain uh, and struggle and challenge and to not have to talk about them, to just be able to observe them and look at them, to not have to, you know, talk about them and complain about them and make a big deal about them and make them the star of the show, but instead use them as an opportunity for inquiry. So for me, that has been the biggest lesson of these last, um, the, since I've been here for a couple of days now, just watching myself, 
watching the beliefs that I have and just questioning, are they really true? And how can I detach from them if something makes me feel a little uncomfortable? How can I detach from it? So one thing that we're going to do um, tonight um, that's part of the retreat, because it's a full moon, and in the type of yoga practice that I do, we don't practice yoga on the full moon. We'll still do retreat things, but you don't do um, practice on a full moon because the energy is not your own. That's the that's the tradition of it. And any day that I can take a break from practice is fine by me because you work hard. You work hard. So we are going to go to a place called, our teacher's taken us to a place called Dragonfly. And it's a place where they have like an herbal sauna. And so you go into the sauna, and supposedly it's really thick with um, steam and smells and stuff. And you go in there, and you sweat, and then you jump in a saltwater pool, and you can go back and forth, back and forth. So that's a treat that our teacher is doing for us. And, you know, it came to me, this idea of the beliefs, because I thought, oh, you know what, I'm going to have to run around in a bathing suit. And that might feel a little uncomfortable to me. And the I could get wrapped up. In that idea of not wanting to go or to feel to, to not be a part of it just because I have to be vulnerable in my 50 or 5 year old body but I also thought number one I'll um, take the um, I, I won't even think about any of those things because I'm not there yet I don't know what this is going to be like I'll go for the experience and see how it feels there but I'm also thinking about um, it would be really good for me to, to sweat and to have a little bit of a skin detox. I um, have been off meat and off chicken um, for a month, and I feel kind of ready finally. You know, over the years I've had little stints of being a vegetarian, but I actually have told myself anyways that I feel really good eating meat, and so I've decided that I'm going to see if I can make it a, not a part of my life anymore and so going in the sauna for me is probably gonna, is almost like going to be a line of demarcation sweat the meat out sweat some chicken out and kind of come out as as a new me so I'm kind of thinking of higher purpose reasons to get over the whole bathing suit thing so I think that's really it and I guess I want to leave you with one thing that I heard today and um, we do our we we st our yoga class starts at 6.30 in the morning, and we do about two hours of different kinds of practices, and then when we're laying down in that relaxing shavasana kind of thing, we have two um, musicians there. If you're in Sydney you pro and you're into yoga, you know these guys are Nadav, who is an awesome um, kirtan musician, and um, oh, Baron, or Rod Baron? Well, anyways, he plays the hand pan drums, and together they're these amazing musicians, and so they play music for us while we're laying down in Shavasana, so it's, it's so beautiful. But Nadav was telling us this um, story, the purpose of the retreat, the focus for these 10 days of retreat is the, is the concept of surrendering to yourself, surrendering to who you are. And he mentioned to us, you know, that his teacher would tell him, surrender to yourself and it's easier said than done why is that why is it hard for us to be exactly who we are our our what's our, what is our true nature you know who are we if we're not um who are we if we're not being influenced by um friends family the media culture who are we you know so that concept is kind of the main focus and i love that idea surrendering to yourself surrendering to even um, the challenging thoughts that you have in your head that you need to work on um, digging through anything that's not resolved that you've been clinging on to that you're ready to kind of let go of that's kind of my focus right now and it never ends it never ends. It's an onion peeling process. The more you discover about yourself and the more healing that you do, the more you have to keep going. And I think that's the, that's the cool part of being a human. It's part of the human experience. We have um, a thought process and we have a soul and we have all these mysteries that are only for us to unravel. And you know, you can either, you can either get into it and think about these things or not. It's completely your choice, but it is a, it's a fascinating 
um, inquiry into who you are to try to get to that place where you finally feel like you've spent your time well here is um, it's, it's something that I love so much and it's why I feel really fortunate to be here right now. All right, that's enough talking about me. Um, listen, if you've never, if we've never met before, whatever, you can find out more about me over at the Change Guru. Um, dot net. I'm going to be doing more of these Bali diaries and some um, snapshots um, f from my trip here that I hope are going to give you a little um, feeling of being on retreat for yourself. Like I said, you don't need to go travel to be on a retreat. It kind of brings everything together and really brings into place. But you can just do little things every single day to give yourself that feeling of being nurtured and being looked after. All right, thank you so much for watching. And I'm going to just kind of wrap it on. Blah, 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 blah. So much to say. Have a great day wherever you are, and I look forward to talking with you next time. Bye for now.